Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, the third season of the Word of the Day podcast, where useful words are pleasantly explained. My name is Jamie Silva. I am your host, and uh, on behalf of the entire staff here at the podcast, may I say that we are as pleased as punch to be back together in the RAV4 studios once again. We did enjoy our brief time off from writing, producing, and recording for this show, and thank you for asking. But, you know, we also didn't want to leave all you word fans out there in the lurch for too long, Uh, you know, moping around, uh, using the same boring old vocabulary day after day, uh, which is no way to go through life. Uh, But now the wait is over. Uh, We are back, and honestly, we would have been back a lot sooner, except we were working on some super cool projects that we will unveil in dramatic fashion, I'm sure, over the coming episodes. Folks, there is so much to look forward to this season. We are so excited. But most of all, we are ready to get down to business with today's word, which is neophyte. Now, in traditional word of the day fashion, I will first attempt to define this word before looking it up. So in my mind, uh, this noun, neophyte, means a person who is new at something or who is getting introduced to it for the first time and is still very much learning the ropes. I, for example, could be described as a podcasting neophyte, though that would have been perhaps a better description uh, closer to the beginning of this year when I was really just starting out. But, you know, there's still plenty of learning left, of course, so it still somewhat applies. Uh, Anyway, so if we check the online definition of neophyte, it goes like this, quote, a person who is new to a subject, skill, or belief, unquote. So very similar here, uh, although this does add the notion of being new to a belief rather than just a, a skill or maybe a new talent or field. So just as you could be a beginner mandolin player or a mandolin neophyte, you could also be an environmental neophyte if you maybe suddenly got super into recycling. Or you could be a religious neophyte if you maybe started going to church consistently for the first time. In the latter two cases, you are a new adherent to a set of beliefs and therefore a a form of neophyte. I mention this religious angle, by the way, uh, partly because that is actually an important part of this word's origin and etymology. Neophyte, you see, comes from the Greek word neophytos. Neo, you should recognize from episode 24 on the word neologism, which just means a new word. And since uh, phyton in Greek means plant, neophytos literally translates to newly planted or growing. And if you want to trace neophytos back even further to its roots, it can almost mean like newly existing or just recently brought into being for the first time. With this knowledge, it's very interesting that when the Greeks in in much older times used neophyte or neophytos, they meant someone who was newly planted, so to speak, in the early Christian church. And actually, the first known use of neophytos in this sense is from the Bible in the Epistle to Timothy, third chapter, in which the author was making the very sensible recommendation that those who were leaders in the church, uh, the bishops as they were called, should not be, like, brand new to Christianity. They should not be recent converts, but rather they should be a bit more uh, well-established and familiar with the faith. Now, the word used here for recent converts to Christianity was neophytos, and consequently, this sense of that word, slash neophyte, became the dominant one for the next basically millennium and a half, and indeed still persists to this day, although, of course, it's no longer the main meaning. And I didn't know this before, but there is a subsidiary definition of neophyte in modern dictionaries that goes like this, quote, a name given by the early Christians and still given by Roman Catholics to those who have recently embraced the Christian faith, unquote. And it was not until the late 16th century that the more general meaning of just being new at something or recently picking up a given belief, not necessarily Christianity, came along. But you can still hear echoes of this religious origin in contemporary usage of neophyte. The neophyte may be inexperienced, perhaps, maybe they're making some mistakes, but they're also very enthusiastic. They're doing their best to learn, and they may even be spreading the word of whatever it is they're doing or believing to others. It isn't for nothing that we have the phrase, the zeal of the newly converted, meaning the particular intensity and fervor of those who have recently adopted new beliefs. 
Thus, it would not be surprising if, you know, the mandolin neophyte, uh, to go back to our earlier example, carries his mandolin around with him all the time, frequently breaking it out in small groups or or even in one-on-one settings, practicing his picking and encouraging others to give it a try, or at least sit quietly and appreciate the fruits of all his practicing. While not necessary, like this isn't part of the definition per se, this kind of enthusiasm would certainly befit the neophyte. Now, I think a great way to remember the meaning of neophyte is to think of it as a slightly antiquated or fancier version of the word newbie, spelt N-E-W-B-I-E for those not familiar, and this is also sometimes shortened to just noob. Newbie means, quote, an inexperienced newcomer to a particular activity, unquote. Now, this does not contain the idea of beliefs, and to my knowledge, it has no religious connections, but other than that, it's a really close replica of neophyte, such that in the situations where you would say newbie, a lot of them you could probably use neophyte instead. There are a couple differences between the two words, though. First, I don't think newbie would imply enthusiasm or zeal, which a neophyte, as we discussed, sometimes does. Like, if you're a newbie, unfortunately, uh, you're probably just bad at whatever you're doing, you're a beginner, end of story. The second difference has to do with phrasing and the context in which you see these two words. See, newbie usually stands alone. If someone is doing something like, you know, cartwheels, and you call them a noob or a newbie, that is sufficient. You don't have to say, uh, you're such a cartwheel newbie, or you're such a a noob at gymnastics. I mean, maybe you could, but it it does, it seems kind of clunky to me. Neophyte is different, and I don't know if this is just because neophyte is more obscure, and so it needs all the context it can get, but at any rate, uh, it seldom stands alone. It, It needs another word or phrase that links it to a skill, subject, or belief. So, uh, if you're making a pot roast in a crock pot, and you say, golly, I'm a real neophyte, people will probably just be confused. And you'll have to be more specific. You'll, you'll probably have to spell it out, perhaps by saying, I am a crock pot neophyte, or a culinary neophyte, uh, with culinary, by the way, meaning uh, just something having to do with cooking. Now, although there are many settings where the word neophyte makes sense, there is one in particular where I've, I've heard it pop up more often, and that is in the realm of politics. A political neophyte is someone who is just running for office for the first time, and they aren't very good at it yet. Uh, they haven't quite mastered the delicate balance of pandering and slandering that leads to victory. And so, they often make some basic mistakes on the campaign trail. To illustrate, uh, let's turn now to the first example of how to use neophyte in ordinary conversation or writing. Example number one. Tom Harrison's status as a political neophyte was evident from his first day on the campaign trail, when, instead of carrying out the time-honored tradition of shaking hands and kissing babies, he got a little confused and began kissing hands and shaking babies instead. Two days later, Mr. Harrison was at the center of another scandal— He was visiting an authentic down-home diner in a critical swing county, where he was busy complimenting the waffles and the voters and and the voters' choice of his favorite waffles when he accidentally referred to the diner as Flapjack Attack instead of its actual name, Pancakes Etc. Since Flapjack Attack was a rival diner in a neighboring, also critical, swing county, the ensuing uproar was furious and prolonged and devastating. And by the end of the week, Mr. Harrison was forced to quit the race. Example number two. Although Luann owned an abundance of gardening tools, she was something of a horticultural neophyte. And horticultural, by the way, just means relating to the art or practice of gardening. Continuing. As a result, Luann occasionally uprooted sprouting vegetables under the misapprehension that they were weeds, while at the same time carefully cultivating a species of invasive crabgrass. Example number three. As a minimalist neophyte, Julia eagerly cast about for opportunities to shed possessions and distractions and to simplify her daily life. Sometimes, though, she found herself looking longingly at the blank space where her television used to be, wondering quietly what the real housewives of various cities were up to these days. Okay, folks, uh, that is it for the examples, but before we go, it is time for another edition of our ever-popular segment, Not In Stock, in which we discuss a great product or service that we unfortunately do not have in stock right now at the fabulous Word of the Day online store. 
This edition of Not In Stock, however, comes with a twist, a big twist, actually. You see, the product that we are about to feature here actually is in stock. Like, you can really and truly go to the website wotdpodcast.com slash merchandise, click the store link, and buy this honest-to-goodness product. Now, I can, I can hear you all shouting into your phones like, what is this product? Tell us what it is right away so we can buy it ASAP. Well, I am pleased to announce that this product is a themed Word of the Day t-shirt that commemorates our very first show, uh, which aired uh, low these many months ago, back at the dawn of 2017, when, as you recall, I was a raw podcasting neophyte. In episode one, we discussed one of my absolute favorite words, the adjective esoteric, which is uh, a rather obscure word that not many people have heard of, and of course means something very obscure that not many people have heard of. Hence, this new product is a shirt, or rather a whole line of shirts, both men's and women's, all sizes and styles, and they all say on the front, quote, esoteric, noun, you've probably never heard of it, unquote. Now, I should pause for a moment here uh, to let you all wipe away uh, the tears of laughter. But yeah, I mean, if I may say so, this shirt, I mean, the, the, the humor on it may be subtle, uh, but the cleverness is unmistakable. And as a result, those who wear it will probably also gain a reputation as both clever and hilarious sorts of people. Uh, word of the day staff, uh, back me up on this. It's, it's pretty funny, right? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. Uh, And keep in mind, folks, uh, my staff here, they've all seen this shirt a million times already. Uh, In fact, most of them have been making these shirts by hand for weeks in our in-house garment factory. And, and I tell you, the line, it just, it still cracks them up every time they see it. Like, if you visited our factory, I, I mean, you would hardly be able to hear the whirring of, of the sewing machines and whatnot over the irrepressible sounds of mirth that just boom and echo off the walls, out the doors, and, and down the halls, and even by the bathroom stalls. Whether stitching uh, bigs or smalls, stacking mediums or talls, little can be heard but calls of joy and peace, goodwill. Will to all. Z- uh, excuse me. I think I. I think I got a little carried away there. But the point is, you know, these these are great shirts, even a little uh, hipsterish, perhaps, uh, which is of course very hot these days. And in my mind, they make a perfect gift for that friend or, or family member who loves words, especially perhaps esoteric words. Now, even though, as we all know, it is impossible to put a price on happiness. Some of you out there perhaps might be feeling a little, uh, if I might uh, borrow a word from episode 35 here, maybe you're feeling a bit impecunious. And so you might be wondering how much these esoteric shirts cost. And, well, I, I kind of regret to inform you that they're a little pricey. I mean, they certainly cost more than I would normally pay for a shirt. Happily, though, we do have a very special deal going on right now where you can get any of these shirts for 50% off, which is a fantastic bargain. And the way you access this deal is by going to our website, picking out a shirt, and then uh, when you get to the checkout page, finding a friend to split the cost with you. And then uh, the two of you can just uh, basically take turns wearing the shirt. Uh, It's pretty simple. Uh, So to sum up, they're, they're pretty cool, and who knows, I might even get one myself. Uh, sorry, uh, Word of the Day staff, I know you're curious, but um, shirts for all of you is, is just not in our budget. Uh, but for the rest of you, they can be found, once again, at wotdpodcast.com slash merchandise. Okay, folks, that will do it for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. And we appreciate you as listeners very much, even if you don't buy any shirts at all. Although I will say uh, there might be a lot less laughter echoing off the factory walls if the staff finds out they did all of that work for nothing. Uh, Anyway, this has been another edition of the Word of the Day podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Silva, saying so long from the RAV4 Studios. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.